This is my Bentley Arnage, and the ride has been a little bouncy and a little rough lately. So I bought two gas springs for the rear from Flying Spares, and they just arrived. So I'm going to try to figure out how to put them on. I didn't see any videos on YouTube on how to do this, at least for this year, in the style of car. So I'm going to do that now. Hopefully this will work and somebody will be able to benefit from this video. Here it is right there. At least that's the one on that side. So, for this car, you need to go to the trunk or the boot or whatever the fuck they call it over there in England and uh, go to each side here. And that's where you're gonna be working. But, and th this part I did see on the internet and I do believe it. And that is you do have to, before you even begin working on the springs, um, after you have identified their location, the, really the, the next step, the most important step, is to release the pressure from the system. So that I believe you do uh, underneath the car, because if you tried to do it here, it would spray out and create a big fucking mess in the trunk, which you don't want. So you release the pressure from the valve under the car, and I'm going to hopefully show that to you in a second once the pressure is released then you can start to take those gas springs out replace them with the new ones incidentally these this is one of the new gas springs i bought from flying spares so you can see there's you know gonna be a bolt there you're gonna have to work on and it looks like uh, two bolts there and then you've got your two fittings one here and then the one on top, so be mindful of that. Um, I bought, of course I bought them in pairs. Um, and uh, I can't remember, I think I bought the good ones. That's the box that came in. I think they had two different kinds, but I, I think I bought the good ones, I hope I did. For those of you that wanna know, this is the price and the part number of the gas spring. You can see there it's the PC111601PA-OEM. And I paid uh, 309 pounds for it. So you can convert that to American dollars if you want. This was in August of 2024. But, uh, you know, obviously I bought some other parts there, but the one I'm focusing on today is this gas assembly spring. And there's the part number if you're interested. I'm underneath the car. And from what I read on the internet, which we know we can't believe everything we hear. But uh, at least to check this out, I was told that the bleeder screw is under the seat shield. And I just wanted to show you something. What, what assholes we're dealing with over here. Those two screws have to come out in order to remove the heat shield. And notice that this is in the way. I mean, what kind of an asshole does something like that? So you're, it's a seven millimeter uh, screw here, and I'm gonna have to get a wrench. But this is in the way. I mean, why couldn't they put it here and here? You know, obviously an asshole was involved here. So have a seven millimeter wrench ready. And uh, then I'm told once this the seat shield comes off, the bleeder screw should be up there to release pressure from the system. You know, before I take all this off, I wanted to kind of peek in there and see if this if I was on the right track. Yeah, it looks like I am. I just wanted to show you here. This this is a little rubber cap here which we know from, at least when I work on uh, brake rotors and stuff, this is usually on the bleeder screw. So this is probably a good sign. It just, right now it's just spinning. I'm gonna pry it off. So this is a good sign. This looks like I I am in the right location tree to uh, turn this and let pressure out of the system. Uh, I am gonna have to get these off. It's a, it, they're rusty and they're in a very awkward position because some asshole 
uh, Ed Bentley decided they were going to put those screws in that location. But anyway, I just wanted to let you know that uh, this does appear that we're on the right track as far as finding the leader screw under the car. All right, I wanted to show you uh, just some more bullshit. This thing here, which which is the main one, it goes in there. That is a 17 millimeter wrench. You're going to need to take that out. This one here is an 11 millimeter, and just to fuck you, they went and used a different uh, size here, and this is a 10 millimeter. So when you get in here. Uh, make sure you got a 10 millimeter wrench, an 11 millimeter, and a 17 millimeter to start unscrewing. Now, when I took this main one out, a bunch of fluid did come out, but I had a towel that I jammed up in there, and I think I got most of it. So, I don't think too much leaked down in, into the car. I did take out as much as I could as far as the carpeting was concerned. So now it's just a matter of unscrewing this uh, cocksucker and then uh, getting them out of there and replacing them. When you take it out, you know, these things are kind of, uh, I don't know, like springy or something. So when you take it out, it turns. And when you when it turns to take it out, you jiggle it because you got to get it over these three studs. Uh, about two or three uh, tablespoons of fluid comes out. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't have my rag in there at the time, so it dripped down here. I, I cleaned it up. Just be aware of that. Put the fucking rag back in there before you take it out because when the ball turns, I mean, it just makes sense if you think about it, but I didn't think about it beforehand. The uh, When the when the ball turns, it... it, it, it a little bit more fluid comes out you want to try to get as much as you can so it doesn't drip into the car and end up making a mess so it's out now here's the, the one I just took out I don't know what that uh, says made in Germany okay well anyway out with the old and in with the new. It's all buttoned up. That uh, that bolt back there was not any fun putting back on. But uh, I got it tightened up. So we got one side finished. I'm going to go do the other side right now and then we're going to fill it up with fluid and call it a day. I'm on the left side of the car now putting this one in and one suggestion I need to tell you about is you know I've been fucking around here for the last 15-20 minutes trying to get this thing together and I realize that I, sh I need to tell you that when you put this back together don't seat it down in the into the studs right away get this one connected first and then get this one and then seat it down into the studs or at least get it threaded a little bit because um i made the mistake of putting the three bolts on in place first and nothing fucking lined up i mean i was screwing these things over and over and god damn you this one here um it just wouldn't go in and I had to pull it back out off the studs and then twist a little bit to get these threaded. So do that first and then bolt it down with the three studs on the base. Because uh, I just don't know what happened. I just couldn't get it to go in without pulling it back off. So just a suggestion. I just want to give you a couple of final thoughts. The job is done now. Um, I do have to put the fluid back in. But other than that, the job's complete. This wasn't that big of a deal. And if I had a YouTube video to help me, it probably would have been a little easier. Hopefully this will help someone else out. I do want to mention that the bleeder screw down there um, under the car I showed you in the beginning, uh, I, didn't, I did not end up taking the heat shield off. It was just too much trouble. I wedged something in there and uh, 
I got my hand around it, and it's an 11 millimeter leader screw. So have an 11 millimeter wrench or a socket. You can take that off by just wedging something in there and pulling the shield down so you can see what you're doing. Uh, or you could work blind. It, you really don't need to take that off. So just ha just remember that's 11 millimeter. But anyway, this job wasn't all that bad. Um, there was a little, you know, some aggravation which accounts for the swearing, but I think the Pope himself would have let out a couple of fucks or shits if he did this job without any instructions. So for those sanctimonious son of a bitches out there that don't like swearing, uh, you know, too bad, but um, hopefully this helps someone else out that has to do this particular uh, job. And on a scale from one to 10, you know, as far as, you know, like, let's say a 10 would be like a head gasket or something, you know, I'd say this was like a, a three or a four uh, a lot of wrench work and wiggling around in the trunk and everything but the truth of the matter is that it wasn't all that difficult and if you had somebody to show you how to do it it would have went a lot quicker than i had to deal with it so anyway there you have it this is the last step um i had to buy a bottle of this uh pentosin and uh it was 42 bucks at napa you can get it cheaper at Amazon, but um, you gotta wait a week or two to get it. I don't have time for that shit. So uh, you need this to fill this back up because of all the hydraulic fluid that is gone. And uh, just so you know, this I used up probably, I would say, at least three quarters maybe a little bit more of this filling it back up so if you have a little of this in your trunk it's not going to be enough you're going to need a brand new one because there's really not that much left in here after i was done filling it up you want to check your brake fluid too um while you're at it but uh anyway this job is is complete and uh wasn't wasn't all that bad hope this helps somebody